So this is part two, the second lecture of uh, the extreme statistic uh, classes. And I would like to discuss specifically today asymptotic calculation. That is, we're interested in calculating the first time of um, the first among n particles to arrive to um, a small target. So let me describe precisely what um, we have in mind. Suppose you have a domain omega, and initially you put particles at position y. Similarly, you can be in dimension 1, you have an interval, and so you are interested in how long it takes for a particle when it is position at position y, so suppose you have n particles, initially you have n particles, and we are interested in how long it takes for the first one to arrive to the um, absorbing part here, let's call it also A, or when started at Y, when do you reach A or B for the first time when you consider N of them? And so specifically, we consider N particle that are Brownian particle, so X1T, XNT. And we would like to look at the statistics of tau n, which is the minimum of t1, tn. So suppose we have this n particle are all Brownian motion. They are identically, independently distributed, which is called iid. And each time tk is the first time this is the first time that the one, that particle tk, xk of t, reaches the absorbing boundary, the omega. And what we will be interested in is to calculate in here the mean of this time of tau n and how this this mean time depends on n. And so what um, we are going to show here is that um, this calculation can be done explicitly. So in dimension um, in dimension one, I'm going to give you the result, and this is what we are going to prove now. It is L squared, so I'm going to define what is L in a second. It's L squared divided by 4 D, D is the diffusion coefficient, log of N divided by square root of pi. So L is actually the length of the shortest ray let's say from y, position y, and if, um, let's say, b is located closest to, um, closest to b than a, then this is this, otherwise it is actually l is in dimension 1, the minimum of y minus b, uh, y minus a. So this is when, um, all right, this is when y minus a is um, further away than y minus b. OK, so and d is a diffusion coefficient. So let me remind you that uh, using the stochastic equation, if for Brownian particle, we have x dot equals square root of 2d w dot where w is the classical Brownian motion with the variance 1. So in higher dimension I'm not going to do that today but the same we have a similar formula which is L squared so in dimension 2 divided by 4d and instead of having just log of n, we have here log 
of n multiply by log of 1 over epsilon. So it's log of n multiply by log of 1 over epsilon. And epsilon here, and there is a constant actually, there is pi uh, divided by 8 here, and there is a square root of 2 also in the numerator. So here we have to add square root of 2 here. And so what is this log of 1 over epsilon? Epsilon here is the size of the small hole. Right, so this is the size, size epsilon. <clears throat> and L again represent here, this is the shortest path from the, the actually this is the ray from a from a to uh, y which is uh, sorry exactly y minus a y minus a so l equals the um, euclidean distance the euclidean distance between y and a if there is an obstacle in between, then we have to take the geodesic distance between y and a that can go, for example, along the obstacle. And let me just write in dimension 3 the result without again proving it, and I will give reference at the end of the talk. So the mean first passage time for tau n, in case we are interested in the dimension 3, it is equal to l squared divided by 2d log of n delta squared divided by l squared and there's a square root pi and again this is all the all of this formula are derived in the case where n is large but epsilon or delta here delta is fixed and small and delta represents in dimension 3. This is again here the size of the small absorbing hole when particles are released at position y. And d is a diffusion coefficient. So the, the, the general description of the trajectory are given by the stochastic equation, which is x dot equals square root of 2 dw dot. So what I would like to propose now is uh, to explain how uh, the, uh, this asymptotic formula can be found using the explicit solution of the uh, focke planck equation in dimension 1. So suppose we are interested in half an interval of, let's say, an, an interval or half a line, then the uh, probability distribution function can be a solution of the focke planck equation, which is dp dt equals d d dp dx squared. And in the case of an interval, and p equals 0 on the boundary, which is here, just let's say the point A or the point A and B. So this is the case of an interval, and this is the case of half a line. So at time 0, we have one particle or n particle located at position y and we are interested in what is the mean first passage time for the first one to escape out of n particle and so we have seen that this can be calculated if we know the solution of this probability density function and this can be calculated explicitly for the case of half a line which is the probability to make a transition from point y to x during time t is simply 1 divided by 4. So this we have already discussed in the first class. This is 4 pi dt, so the first class about extreme statistics, multiplied by the exponential of x minus y squared divided by 4 dt, 
minus the exponential of x minus y squared plus here no we have to replace this minus by a plus squared divided by 4 dt right and so this is for the case of half the line and now it is well known and I'm not going to uh, spend too much time here on this but for the case of an interval the probability distribution function of transition from y to x during time t can be written uh, explicitly as the sum of uh, <coughs> the same quantity that we have just seen so square root of 4 pi dt for n in all uh, integers that are negative and positive of the exponential of minus x minus y and if the size of the interval is a, this is plus 2na, 2na, so this is squared, divided by 4dt, 4dt, and this we have to subtract the similar term exponential of minus of x plus y plus 4 plus uh, 2 n a so x plus y plus 2 n a and again this is squared and this is everything in the exponential has to be divided by 4 dt 4 dt all right so now we have we know in uh, these uh, two cases in the case so again this is half a line and this is the case of an interval we know exactly the probability distribution function and so and so the mean first passage time tau n can be related to this using uh, the classical formula which is the integral so let me just skip this to the next slide so now we are interested in tau n let me write it it now so tau n is can be uh, written as the integral from 0 to infinity by definition this is the first moment of the um, probability um, the cumulative tau n less than t and by integrating this by part and this is very well classical this is the integral from 0 to infinity of the probability that tau n is bigger than t and we have seen in the first class so I, I refer to the first class because we have n independent particle this is exactly the integral of the probability that the time for one particle is bigger than t to power n dt and this um, is interesting because this can be written as the exponential of n log of this probability then tau 1 is bigger than t And so we are going to use the classical Laplace method to look at the um, behavior of the exponential of this term as n goes to infinity. And for this, we can use the classical Laplace method. Which we have discussed uh, in previous classes so I'm not going to explain uh, the Laplace method again so what we need now is uh, basically to calculate and to have an idea of this function probability of tau 1 less uh, than t and the Laplace method since the probability is always between 0 and 1 the log is negative 
and um, the probability of tau 1 bigger than t uh, is a decreasing function, it is 1 when t equals 0 and goes to um, when t goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So we have a function that basically decays, right? So I have plotted here. I have plotted here this function here. And so the, the, the maximum is achieved uh, near zero. And this is where we have to expand this function in order to calculate this integral. So we need to expand, expand the function, expand this probability tau 1 less than t near 0, near 0. And so uh, for this, it turned out that in the case of half an interval, the probability that tau 1 is uh, bigger than t, which is exactly the survival probability, so this is equals to the integral from uh, 0 to infinity of the probability of x and y dy. And this can be actually written in terms of uh, the error function which is 1, so I leave this as, as an exercise, is not very hard, it uses just a change of variable. It's 1 minus 2 divided by square root of pi, 2 divided by square root of pi, multiplied by the integral, which goes from a divided by square root of 4t, so square root of so a divided by square root of 40 and we integrate up to infinity of exponential minus u squared du minus u squared minus u squared du which is the classical gaussian integral and we are interested in the behavior when t is small so we are going to explore the limit t small. t is close to zero. And so for this, we are going to use a classical expansion, which can be obtained here by directly integrating by parts uh, this integral. So the, um, this probability, so let me rewrite it, this probability so let's put it in, in, in black. The probability that tau 1 is bigger than t can be expanded and it is equal to 1 minus exponential exponential of minus a divided by 40 divided by a divided by 4t multiplied by square root of pi. And then there is here a reminder, reminder term, which is 1 uh, minus 4t divided by 2a squared. But this term is really unimportant, plus O of t divided by a squared. So that if now we plug this into the formula, we have tau n basically can be approximated as the integral from 0 to infinity of the exponential. Yeah, and now we are using, of course, that the log of this probability, you know, can be uh, written as log of 1 minus a capital X that uh, when X is close to 0, which is exactly minus X. I'm using this for X small where x is all of this. So then we are left with the integration from 0 to infinity of exponential of minus n, so 4, 4 t uh, divided by a pi, 
square root and then we have now another exponential which is exponential of minus a squared divided by 4t dt and now the question is how to calculate uh, this integral so there are uh, some change of variable that are uh, obvious one is to get rid of the uh, a, a, which is the size of the interval inside the domain. And so this can be uh, done by uh, using u um, such that, uh, that uh, one, 1 over u equals a squared divided by 4t. So this is the first change of variable that will uh, remove this um, this uh, the a squared, and thus if you do this again, I'm not going to do it. It's very easy just just to replace, and it's linear basically. Uh, so so we are left with a squared divided by four. The boundary doesn't change so this is from 0 to infinity and then we obtain exponential of minus n and multiply so minus n multiply by a function of u which I'm going to describe now a function w of u multiply and divide it here by square root of pi du where w of u is this uh, function which is uh, square root square root of um, square root of u exponential minus so square root of u and then we are exponential of minus 1 divided by u minus 1 yeah this is very important because this uh, not a nice function at u equals 0 and so <coughs> now to proceed we are going to call n prime uh, just to change uh, notation, n prime is equals n divided by square root of pi. So it's n divided by square root of pi, n divided by square root of pi. And now what we are going to do is to use the new function, um, so this is square root of pi. We are going to use this new function To, um, to, to, to write it as this new variable v. So v is going to be our new variable here. Okay, so now the goal is to calculate this integral using this change of variable v equals square root of u exponential of minus 1 divided by u, which is described here. Okay, so I will do that in the next uh, slides. So for this, wait, let me just introduce a new page before we discuss this. So tau, tau n, now can be written using uh, this uh, new uh, variable. This is uh, the integral from uh, 0 to infinity of exponential minus n prime w and now we have dw divided by the derivative of, of uh, w this new function with respect to the variable w and uh, <coughs> This can be uh, calculated 
So for this, you need to approximate, um, I mean, you, we need to calculate first the derivative of w. So rem let me remind you that w was square root of uh, u, square root of u exponential minus u. So just differentiate this with respect to u and take the leading order term when u is uh, close to zero. And so by doing this, we are left here with a, a general term, which is uh, omega. So the general terms of one divided by w prime is log of omega squared omega. And this can be integrated by parts in here. So when we integrate this by part, um, by integrating this term here, um, we are left, so the, the, the integrated term doesn't need anything, so we are left with the, the, um, the other integral, um, so which is going to be n prime, so the, the two uh, negative sign cancels, n prime, exponential minus n prime w, and if you integrate this, what do you get? You get precisely 1 divided by log of omega. So divided by log of omega d omega. Where again, here I have integrated by parts. Integrated integration by parts. And so this now, uh, wait, I have forgotten that there was here a squared divided by d. Or divide, yeah, the d, I have, no, uh, let me remind you that d was one everywhere. So, but it's a squared divided by four d. So a squared here divided by four, four d. And now, uh, this term can be uh, now estimated by uh, changing here the, again variable n prime w equals u and what is important here is that the contribution when log when w is zero is going to be a zero because uh, log of w is infinity so one over log of w is precisely zero so it, it is always possible to decompose the integration from 0 to uh, infinity, from 0 to um, delta, and then delta to infinity. I mean, this if you want to do it carefully. But on this interval, nothing, uh, there's a contribution is very small. And so ultimately, when you estimate this integral after this change of variable, you are left with log of n because uh, this is going to be the leading order term. So you are left with log of n and the exponentials of um, the exponential of let's say v from zero to infinity is about one. So this is an important. This is one. And so then you are left with um, one multiplied by a squared divided by four d. And this is a leading order term that we, d we discussed for the uh, mean first passage time. So tau n behave like a squared divided by 4d log of n, which is n, yeah, and I'm sorry, this is log of n prime here. So that's why here we have then finally to replace n prime by uh, n divided by square root of pi, which is a formula I have uh, presented at the beginning. Uh, the case of an interval, the case of um, of an interval is almost similar. Uh, now you have to do the same calculation uh, with the with the series. So the the size of the interval is again. Um, a, so this is between A and B, and this is of size A. And if you do the calculation, and I will give you a reference 
where this is done, the mid first passage time for the first particle has to do with the um, with L squared, which is now the minimum uh, this is the minimum, you know, we just did half a line and here the L was the distance between the point Y and the absorbing part, but here L is actually the minimum of the distance between Y and B and Y and A. And then the um, calculations is L squared divided by 16 D log of 2N divided by square root of pi, which the two can be at, le at leading order or square root of pi at leading order is unimportant compared to log of n. But this shows the difference between the case of an interval and the case of half uh, a space. So um, I'll give reference at the end where this calculation can be followed um, more uh, specifically. But before that, I just would like to finish with already what we discussed in the, in the previous uh, class about extreme statistics, it's about the distribution of the first and the second arrival. So here we have uh, run simulation and compare the distribution with the simulation showing that the theory give a um, very good approximation. And <coughs> we have looked also at uh, the dependency with the respect of the number of initial particle. Here we have five, here this is 500, and you can see how this leads to a shift in uh, the uh, normalized time scale. And again, this can, we can show that this, is, uh, this uh, shift is proportional to log of n and not uh, um, n itself. So um, another interesting case is the case where we have the second arrival time where you look at the probability for um, the second one to arrive and we discuss in the first uh, class that there will there, ha there, there there is a correction to use because when the first particle has arrived to let's say the boundary b and the initially all the particle were at position a and this is reflective and this is an, an absorbing boundary, then when the first particle, which I show you here, has arrived, then the other particle are not just have not just stayed at point A, but there is a certain distribution of this particle. And this distribution can influence now the second arrival time because they don't have to travel the same distances as if they were just located all at point A. And so we have described this correction in a reference that I will give. Okay, so all the calculation are now available at this, on this paper, Asymptotics of Extreme Statistics of Escape Time in uh, Dimension 1, 2, and 3 for dimensional diffusions. It is available on the archive at the following address. We have discussed the application um, to biology uh, using this terminology uh, of redundancy principle. So we think that nature, by adding molecules, is not just wasting, like if you think about um, the number of calcium ions, where you can have hundreds of thousands of this uh, messenger, so the reason why you have so many particles is that the extreme trajectory, the first ion to arrive to a target, will initiate the process, which can be an amplification process. And thus this sets the time scale of the transduction. And this is particularly true in the case of the search for um, an egg by millions of spermatozoa in the complex uterus geometry where obviously it is known that the first sperm that arrive will fertilize the egg. And so probably this waste of sperm 
corresponds precisely to the need of finding a target as soon as possible in a, in, and in the position is random, the particle, the, the, the sperms do not know where is the egg because it is located centimeters away where chemotaxi, rheotaxi, and all these taxis uh, phenomena cannot uh, be sensed by the sperm. Only more locally they can uh, possibly attract or restrict the sperm to the precise region where it has to fertilize the egg. So we think that these extreme statistics and the dependency on N uh, represents the, the, the new physical law of, um, of the search for uh, a target. And especially it says that the many numbers of particle, which could be seen as a redundancy and obviously as a waste is not a waste. It is here for a purpose. And the purpose is to make sure that this um, process of finding the target is done in a certain amount of time. And the way nature has solved this problem is to use many trajectories. And finally, the trajectories that are selected are extreme in this uh, ensemble of trajectories. And uh, we are, they are probably associated with the minimum pass or the geodesic associated to uh, the variational problem. And we think that this variational problem has to do with the minimization of the energy of uh, the pass. So I'll stop here for this lecture. Thank you for uh, watching it.